All right. Oh, there it is. Live on Facebook. Right. I'm going to go refill. <laughs> this again all right redirecting to facebook live uh, oh it says it's not live now cobains shoot oh. all right so here's this let's see let me go look at my phone i'm gonna go see what's what it's doing and i think we will hey ready to go can you see if it's working on live right now i can only see one face at a time there we go all right so there we go it looks like let's see here let's see what that looks like come on load damn you oh there it is all right we yes we are live everybody Hi. Awesome. So there we are. All right. Okay. We'd like uh, AAPN would like to welcome you all to our, to our first live streaming debate. We hope for a nice, thoughtful discussion between the faith and the lack thereof. Oh, and logical discussion, of course. All participants are aware this discussion regarding the existence of God is unintended to influence the participants but rather to let the viewers witness rational dialogue regarding the issue at hand. AAPN presents Aaron Ra, Aaron. Daniel F oh, Damn it, I knew I'd do that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't say it eight times, and I even explained to uh, our uh, guests here how to pronounce it correctly, and then I screwed up. Right, well, pressure our, is off of us well, now. You got the first one. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I took the burden off of you, yeah. Well, <laughs> Aaron Rod, Daniel Bennett, discussing religion with guests Heather Simpson and Julian Carson. Wait a minute, did you say Daniel Dennett? Bennett. Bennett. <laughs> oh, <Whoa. very> <laughs> oh, man. I'm not messing up that many times on me. <laughs> Fun's all you get. Uh, of course, it was the obvious bloody one that I knew. Anyhow. Enjoy the show, everyone. Heather, it's yours. I believe that's Heather's. Uh, Heather was uh, scheduled to go first on the discussion. Yep. Okay, I, I just didn't know if we wanted to tell them how the format was going to go or if we just wanted to dive in. I'm great to dive in. But... We're keeping things nice and easy going. So it's, it's, you, you have the first draw, so. Okay. Well. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. Sorry about the technical difficulties, um, but I'm glad you all are here. First of all, I want to clarify the arguments that we are not making tonight. Um, we're not saying that atheists have no morality. I mean, it's very obvious that atheists can possess morality and um, be moral in their actions while being atheistic in thought. And we're not saying that morality comes from the Bible. Um, Morality existed far before the Bible was transcribed, translated, or collected. We're also not arguing that Christians or any religious people are happier, more moral, or better people. And um, I also want to clarify what this debate is not. It's not a debate of science versus faith. It's not philosophy versus rationality, but rather it is philosophy versus philosophy, or faith versus faith. Um, one of the Oxford definitions of faith is complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Well, then I, I have to bow out. I don't have a complete trust. Yeah. Can I finish? Okay. I would say that Aaron and Daniel have faith or complete. I'm sorry. They have confidence, degrees of confidence, and they're not being a God as an atheist and not an agnostic. Um, any belief you hold about the origins of the universe has to be taken on faith. I would Except go as far as... Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Just... and, and we should go ahead and clarify, we were under the impression that it was a formal debate, but we were just told that it's more laid back today. So that's kind of the, the tension here. Um, 
sorry, since the origin of the universe cannot be observed, repeated, or demonstrated, it lacks the hallmarks of a scientific theory and it must be treated as a philosophical one. So what we are debating tonight is philosophy versus philosophy. Daniel and Aaron are likely to appeal to evidence, but by doing so, they're appealing to a standard of truth. Not only that, but they're holding us to that same standard by asking us for proof. Therefore, that standard of truth must be universal, objective, and outside of themselves. They base their worldview on science, but science is not a standard, it's a methodology. It's a series of steps that we use to validate a theory. But in order for science to be useful, we have to have uniformity of nature. When a scientist conducts an experiment, he has assumptions that laws of nature will remain true for his or her experiment based on how the laws have behaved in the past. He or she assumes gravity will still function for the experiment just like it did yesterday, but they have no justification for their assumptions. In a random chance universe, that should have no law and order. If they want to be consistent with their worldview, they need to admit that they don't have a justification for the assumption of uniformity of nature. Furthermore, as justification for their atheistic stance, they will likely appeal to laws of logic and reason. The irony is that in a universe where time and chance acted upon matter, in a chance explosion with no meaning, there should be no order. There should be no laws of logic. There should be no laws of thermodynamics, no mathematical laws. There should just be chaos. When pressed on this question, they will justify their logic and reason by using logic and reason, making their arguments circular, which is what they accuse Christians of doing when they try to justify God. They'll probably um, appeal to the moral argument saying that if there is a God, the God of the Bible is immoral. They'll cite slavery, genocide, and stonings as reasons he's immoral. But the problem is their worldview gives them no standards by which to call these things immoral. If humans are just the product of random chance and time acting on matter, why does any of this matter? Why does it matter if star stuff suppresses other star stuff? Is there some universal standard of morality that we should all be aware of and hold to? They certainly seem to be speaking to one, but can no, give no justification for it. And I'm talking about atheists in general. I'm not talking about Aaron and Daniel right now. And um, what they will most likely say is how evil Christianity is and how deceitful it is and how many atheists the world or how many atrocities the world has suffered at the hands of religious extremists. But I say, so what? Aaron and Daniel have no grounds to call anything evil or bad. In a world where morality is subjective and there are no moral absolutes, how can you say killing people is immoral? How can you say Christianity is deceitful or bad? By what standard? The problem is that Aaron and Daniel do live in a world where there are logical, laws of logic, uniformity of nature, reason, and morality but they have no justification for it. What they've demonstrated is that they exist in the image of God and therefore live in his world according to his rules. They can deny it, they can fight it, but they can't escape it. What's that? Or is it, is it, is it now my turn to correct all that nonsense? Yeah, sure. you can go for it. Thank you, because that was a whole lot of bullshit in just five minutes. All right, so... If, if we have a universe, that, if, if a universe is going to exist at all, if any number of universes are going to exist, every one of them has to have properties. For a thing to exist, it has to have properties. That means that there's going to have to be some laws built into it or it won't even exist at all. Not complete chaos. I mean, well, complete chaos in this case would be nothing. You would, you would have a, a, a pandemonium such that you wouldn't get an intelligible order out of anything. There has to be a very simple rule, few, very simple rules for any universe to exist. And what they've demonstrated with like computer simulations and so forth is you create a simulated world, you create just a very few rules and you will have patterns that develop in it. And they're not random. They are not chaotic. They tend to be deterministic. Especially when we get into things like evolution. Now, there's a whole lot of things that she said, like, 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 if you can't, if you can't, if there was nobody there to see the beginning of the universe, then you can't know how it happened. Well, this is going back to the fallacy that, that, you know, you, there's no way that people can understand 
uh, who committed a murder if there was no living witnesses to it, or if you saw a pair of if you saw footprints walking across a beach, or if you come home and you find footprints tracking in mud into your house, and they're, they're Nike tennis shoe symbols, and they're all over your floor. Would you know, even though there was nobody there to see it, would you know, know for certain that somebody had actually been there? Yes. With no eyewitnesses, we can still tell when certain things happen or how certain things happen. We can know some things. The difference is that with science, you don't profess absolute knowledge, especially not without any basis. With religious belief, you have to just assert whatever you want to believe and then just declare it to be true. But the truth is what the facts are, what we can show to be true, not the empty assertions of impossible absurdity that aren't even that aren't ev evidently true, nor even possibly true. So while she wants to say she wants to project this ridiculous worldview onto us and say that we have no basis, we damn sure have a basis. We're the only ones that have a basis. She's using our basis and she just doesn't know it. We have the objective standard or the closest you're going to get to an objective standard where Christians actually do not. They pretend, yes, pretend, because that's what faith is, make-believe. They pretend that, they that their morality is dictated by the subjective opinion of whatever mere fallible man is pretending to speak for the subjective opinion of their God. The objective standard is if you know what morality is at all, then you have a standard by which you can measure whether God is moral, among other things. And because we were evolved as a societal species, because we are such a social animal. We know that it is to our benefit, and it's not just what we know. Mathematically, by population mechanics, we know that we, it, it, it behooves us to have empathy for our family, friends, and fellows, and not to piss off all our judges and peers. So we have to be supportive of society. And when you talk about population mechanics in a very few generations, when, when the aberrants, when the selfish people, when the cruel people, the addicted people are going to be eliminated from the population, either by being banished or imprisoned or killed or executed or what have you, then you understand that, that we are going to generate people who are so, pro-social, right? And, and sadly, religion works against this. But we do have an objective moral standard, and it's not something that the Christians can glom off to their magic imaginary friend and then say that we're stealing from them. We are not stealing from the fantasy worldview. This was opened up that we were going to be having a discussion about, you know, those with faith and those with not. Well, now we, we also have to have a discussion of those with reason and those with not. All right. Next person. All right. So um, a couple of things. Start from the beginning. Um, Mr. Ra, he said that he doesn't make any claims to have any absolute knowledge, but he speaks as if he does. He made a lot of definite statements in there, um, which I don't understand how you justify saying that you don't make claims to absolute knowledge. You speak as if you do, but then you say you don't. So you can't have it both ways. It's got to be one or the other. Uh, when you talk about the computer simulations and how you're saying we can do this, and if we just program in a few simple laws and then let it run, we can see, okay, those laws are programmed in by someone. Your they don't have to be don't. in order, as I said, can, for can I a universe can to I finish, exist, sir? Sir, no, sir, can for I a universe to okay. exist at all, it has to have properties. If there, if if you don't have somebody to program it, then it has to come from its own self, right? There has to be laws in order for it to exist. Period. So without a God, you can't have a universe unless there is another way for it to exist on its own. And so we have a universe, and what we have of a God is every indication that it was made up of mere fallible savages who had no idea what they were talking about. And that is why the Bible is wrong about absolutely everything. All right, so back to the point. Um, like you were saying, if there's no God, therefore this has to be, well, you're showing your presupposition that there's no God and then work. I make there. no presuppositions. You're, you, everybody is, has a presupposition. That's absurd, This is not sir. a presupposition. A presupposition is something that you assume to be true, and without question, you cannot question this. There's nothing in my perspective that fits that description, but there is for you, right? I have, I, I have to examine the evidence and come to a conclusion, and everything that I currently hold to be true has been something that I've investigated and arrived at, not one presupposition anywhere in it. So you would say that, is it certain that there's no God? I would have to say that I know that there's no God in the same way and to the same degree that I know that there are no leprechauns. Again, it's not absolute, but it is, it is in the, in the how, how do I put this? It is remotely, hypothetically possible that somebody could conjure a leprechaun and I would have to say that I'm wrong. But until then, 
I will know that there's no leprechauns just as well as you know that there's no leprechauns. And for the same reasons that I know that there's no God. God is not even possible because there's been no possibility established. And every claim that has been made for God falls into one of two categories. Not evidently true and evidently not true. That's it. That's all. That's all you got. Empty assertions not backed by anything. Not even logic. Okay, so again, just to clarify, when you say there's no possibility that there's a God, are you certain there is no God? I know that there's no God, yes. I'm, okay, I'm about as confident about at that as I possibly can be. I can't claim absolute knowledge, but I'm pretty damn confident because there is, in fact, no possibility of God. Okay, so you can't claim absolute knowledge, but there's no right. possibility of a God. Right. Can if, you present a possibility? All right, if I you may. understand that in order to say whether something is possible, we have to have a precedent or a parallel or a verified phenomenon indicating that such possibility exists. We can't honestly say that something is possible if we can't show that possibility. So if you have, if you can show that possibility, then I would concede that there is a possibility. But until then, there is not. Okay, so in one of your videos that I did take the time to watch, uh, you put out the, the possibility that the Earth, or the universe, I should say, could have come from the explosion of a previous multiverse. No, nope. um, can you did? No, I never made a video like you that. You absolutely did. I wrote I it down. I watched not. this video. You absolutely I, did. You sir. absolutely did not watch the video. I absolutely did not make because I absolutely <laughs> did not make any such video because I never absolutely believed in any such thing. I absolutely would never never said any such thing. But absolutely every creationist absolutely misrepresents me and absolutely misunderstands every damn thing I say. So I absolutely understand that you have absolutely misrepresented me again. But I absolutely did not say that. You have got okay. to calm down. Holy <laughs> crap. <laughs> Okay, so, I did, uh, but I will clarify what I did say. Okay, please. Yeah, the Big Bang is not was never supposed to be an actual explosion. It's supposed to be an inflation of time space uh, of uh, material energy and so forth. And uh, this includes space and time together. And this was supposed to have come from an, a, a multiverse, but it wasn't actually an explosion. So we just leave leave it as not technically an explosion. Leave it at that. Okay. Pardon my use of the word explosion. Uh, pardon the semantics. Uh, but you did say that it was possible that the universe could have come from a previous multiverse. Is that correct? Yeah, well, we, we say we think so. So that's okay. what's been being postulated by physicists uh, as what the math is showing right now. Yeah. It's, now the physicists it's theoretical mathematics. It, just because the numbers work, we don't know if it is. So th this is we don't want to run into what we refer to as the god of the gaps of where we don't know something, we're just going to insert something. Yeah, remember that I said that there's three criteria in order to establish a possibility. You have to have a, um, a precedent or a parallel or a verified phenomenon. And with the indications of cosmic redshift, we do have that. So with if now we understand that there's many cosmologists now who are letting go of the idea of the sing singularity that they originally held to. And there are some cosmologists, Son Carroll being one of them, who says that the universe never had a beginning. But I would I, I would sooner assume that there you know there may may, may as well be as you know thousands of uh, of universes as well as just one right. What's the okay. difference? That's an interesting uh, point actually that you brought up because I, I believe it's in the same video. Uh, correct me without blowing your stack if I'm wrong. Uh, but in one of your videos, you did assert <laughs> that um, it's a logical fallacy that God is eternal. Is that correct? You did assert that. I did. I asserted that it's a logical fallacy that God is eternal. What fallacy would that be? Uh, I don't know. That's the way you framed it. Uh, you said that it's logically inconsistent that God is is an eternal being, that it doesn't make any kind of sense. I don't remember saying anything like that. Okay, let me see if I have the quote for you. Hold on. So in the interim, Heather, do you have anything yeah. for me right now? Well, Julie, well that up. I was under the impression that you were going to give a statement. <laughs> so as it stands right now, I, you know, this is kind of more turned a lot less, which is fine. What is going to roll with it? Uh, so, a lot more yelling yeah. than I thought. But... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, this is, I, I was intending to be as polite as possible, but I, I wasn't expecting to come out of the gate with the, the, the nice prelude immediately followed by the projection, which so irritates me. When creationists, when Christians, when believers in general want to pretend that those who do not believe are believers. It's so irritating. No, no I do not have faith. You don't have evidence, and I don't have faith. Stop trying to push your 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 faults onto those who will not share them. That so irritates me. 
I'm an epistemist. I think that, that faith is the most dishonest position it is possible to have, and that any belief that requires faith should be rejected for that reason. That you have faith that there is no God. You have faith. No, I don't have faith. I have evidence. You have evidence that right. there's no God. So putting it this way, I have just as much faith that unicorns do not exist. As, they are, as there is faith that there, a God does not exist. I cannot definitively prove that a unicorn does not exist. If I, if I can, I, I found the quote. Um, okay. It was in your video, uh, Theism is Not Rational, where you made a response to one of the PragerU videos. Yep. Uh, the, the quote was uh, that God cannot be eternal because it is a logical fallacy and an unsupported assertion and a baseless assumption, uh, defensible only with logical fallacies. Okay. Okay. Uh, but you are comfortable with an idea. And that's true because every argument for God is a logical fallacy. And okay. every logical fallacy has been used as an argument for God. And I've made that statement many times. Yeah, so you're, um, you're uncomfortable with the idea, not even uncomfortable. I would say you completely reject the idea of an eternal God. Right. Okay. God was obviously made up just a few thousand years ago. Uh, do you also reject the idea of any kind of eternal being at all? Yeah. Okay. So how do you have? Uh, it, so you can't have. By my understanding of what a mind is, is the you know it's the 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 information, the consciousness, the perception, whatever, uh, all the different properties that we get developed within a brain. And having a disembodied mind means you have all of this data that is not that, that's the product of a thing that didn't generate it. That makes no sense. Okay. And, and for God to have made us in his image, why would God be in the image of an evolved ape? Everything that we have in the Bible describes the, the earth from the perspective of people who have no idea what the rest of the cosmos look like. They think that the earth is flat. They think that it's just a, a flat plane with a, a giant crystal dome over it. And that the stars and the moon and the sun are all you know, within this expanse. And that the sun and the moon are the same size. I mean, they have no idea what the reality really is and this is clear from the from the mythology but if you want to go beyond that then the best we could say is even if a god exists then evolution is still an inescapable fact of population genetics and the bible is still man-made mythology not even the existence of god could change either of these things okay neither of those was the direction i was going to go in but uh okay just want to ask you a question you did okay. reject the idea of any kind of eternal being at all uh, right. Do you reject the idea of anything being eternal at all? Well, no. I have to. Ex I have to concede that it appears that uh, that material energy is in fact eternal. Okay. So but in there's the same a, there's video, there seems to be a caveat for that. Right. The way I understand it is, if you have supermassive gravity, can slow down time. And then, if you have, if it were the case where all of the 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 matter and energy in the universe were compressed into a single, and it doesn't even have to be like you know a tiny singularity, but you know even at a relative mass of all of the uh, all of the, the 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 matter in the universe all compressed into one area, however big that would be, then that would effectively stop time. So if you were to tra chart it back and you put it on a Cartesian coordinate system, you would see an asymptote that curves in to where uh, one second stretches out until it equals infinity when t equals zero. So that at the point of the Big Bang, you have the material energy essentially exists forever. It is eternal. Even though the universe had a beginning, it still would be eternal. Okay, now, to the point. Um, so you are, you're okay with something being eternal, just not the idea of an eternal being, per se. Right. Because okay. how could you have how could you have something that is that complex? I mean, you have to build complexity. You can't start with super complexity and then make everything simple and then start building again from there. Why not? Why, exactly. Why would it? But why not? Could, you're making you're, well, you're making an assertion, but you're not giving a reason. You're just you're just saying because. Why not? Because I just said you have to build complexity. Okay, but you said give me a reason, not an assertion. Give me a reason. Okay. I have a working hypothesis that is that the, the, the God that you believe in was made up by people just a few thousand years ago uh -huh. to explain, among other things, what air is, because they had no idea that air was particulate matter, but they knew that you would die if you can't breathe. So they came up with these ideas that if you were, if you craft things out of clay, you can make figurines that look like living things. And if you, wouldn't it be great if you could just breathe the breath of life into those things, right? And then somebody comes up with the idea that, hey, maybe somebody did 
breathe maybe somebody could they would have they would be gods they would breathe the breath of life into these clay figurines and they would turn into animals or whatever and then somebody else comes up and says hey maybe that already happened and maybe maybe that happened to us and this would be about the time that they discovered hemp that expands their minds to these kind of ideas so that the idea that they come up with the idea that that god created them out of clay figurines and this is much the way that they just made it up. And then eventually, they come up with the idea of a soul. Now, they don't realize that they, that their forefathers originally invented this idea because they saw clouds move, they saw dust devils, and literally thought they were devils. And that they thought that when you sneeze, you know, your spirit leaves your body. And so that's why people say, bless you, because they didn't know what air is. That's the problem. And so now, now, centuries later, they have this other tradition. And now they think, now they've compartmentalized it. So now they make a difference between air and a spirit. And they don't realize that they were once based on the same idea. Okay, so back to the point, because I didn't actually answer what I asked you. You said that you can't start ultra complex and then make simple. Why not? Okay, show me how you could. Okay, so your assertion essentially is because you didn't see it, you don't believe it. No, I didn't assert anything like that. So what is your assertion? That, that everything that we see, everything we see in reality starts simple and then becomes increasingly complex. I mean, it's just pretty much true of like everything. That's just okay, the nature so of things. Because so you, you didn't want to propose, see it, it can't be, is what you're saying. I never, no, I never said anything remotely like that. That's you the just second said it in time, a different that way. You just said it in a time, different way. That's the second time I've corrected you on the same assertion. Please do not try to put words into my mouth that you know that I'm not saying. Okay, and that let's I'm play rejected. it back. Let's play it back. You said everything we see is this way. So what you're saying is, since I didn't see it this way, it cannot be that way. Everything we see, period. Mm -hmm. There is right. not an exception to this pattern. So because now, you haven't seen it, it can't be so, is what you're saying. No, that's not what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> Can you find... That's, yeah, that's the third time I've had to correct you on the same thing. Can you show me any indication... That such a thing can be true because I've got a working hypothesis and it is a working hypothesis and yours is not. It just isn't. You, it's got nothing. You gave me a conjecture as to the basis of where you I gave you no conjecture. Came. Okay. Can I please finish a sentence? Okay, but, I, but don't, don't accuse me of things I didn't do. Okay. Can because I I'm going to have to jump in and correct, correct you. Okay. If, can you I tell me th thought? if you tell me that I said things I didn't say, I'm going to have to jump in and correct you because I didn't say that thing. This is why we wanted a formal debate format, so this doesn't happen. I know, and that's why I didn't want one. Well, I, don't want didn't... To listen, I don't want to listen to 20 minutes of me being reasonable and you guys you know, it, it, saying th that I say or believe things that I, that I have faith that I don't have. Who needs to hear 20 minutes of you lying about me? I get that all the time anyway. I want a free flow conversation because I want to try to reason with you. Okay, so can I finish the thought? Absolutely. Okay, so you gave me your theory on where you think religion started from and how it came to be. I that said a did not hypothesis. Okay. It's not that a theory not until it, the hypothesis doesn't become a theory until it is effectively proven. Okay, so you gave me your hypothesis. Again, pardon the, the word slip. You gave me your hypothesis on how you think religion came to be. That does not answer the question as to why it could not start infinitely complex and become simpler. You keep making that assertion. Saying I don't because, make an assertion. Uh, okay. I said you have to have these are the, these are the rules. You have to have a precedent or parallel verified phenomenon indicating that such possibility exists. Show me, and I'll concede that you got it. I'll concede that there's a possibility of a god. But until if you can't, if you can show me zero possibilities, then how many possibilities do we have? Okay, so if I may, okay. <sighs> I just want <laughs> to just, just my I, my math skills are pretty lame, but I just want to make sure we understand. If you show me zero possibilities, then how many possibilities do we have? Can you answer that question? It's like trying to nail jelly to a wall. Tell you what. You're right. It is. Asking you a simple question <laughs> you could answer with a simple, so simply, and you won't. That is like nailing jello to the wall. You won't let me finish if the thought, sir. If you cannot show me any possibility, then it is it fair to say that we have no possibility? Okay, so you're saying it's a certainty then? That is not remotely what I okay. said. What I actually said is a question that you refuse to answer. Okay. If well, you can't show me a possibility, then is it fair to say that there is no possibility? Okay, can we go back to the question that I was asking you? Okay, so you're not going to answer my question okay. at all. You're just going to try to put words in my phone. I, I'll go ahead. We'll continue. Well, no, I'm trying to finish the original question that I had, but you just don't right. like it. So for some reason, what do you mean? I don't like it. You. What do you mean I you don't refuse, like it? You don't like it, apparently. You don't like what I say or ask you, so you just refuse to answer it. 
I, I never refuse to answer anything. And we, this is a recorded uh, conversation. I think we'll note, I think everybody can point out that I haven't refused to answer a single question. You ask me questions, I will answer gleefully. Okay. Without refusal so. ever. Regard, even if I don't like them, quit <sighs> accusing me of your own faults. Stop that. It is irritating. Okay. Oh boy. Okay, so back again. You gave me a hypothesis about where you think religion came from and how it came to be. Okay, and you did that, that does not explain <laughs> why you why it cannot go from more complex to less complex in creation. Okay, All that and I is, did just explain. If you can't show a possibility, then we don't have a possibility, do we? Okay, so you is that fair to say? And if you don't think it's fair to say, don't yell at me. Okay. Just tell me you don't okay. think it's fair to say. Okay. Is it fair to say that if you can't see it, then it cannot be a possibility? No, it's not fair to say. But is it fair to say that since you cannot show me any possibility, then we have no possibility? No. Okay. How many possibilities have you shown? Okay. How many possibilities can you oh, show? Oh, Lord. <laughs> I can't even finish a thought with you. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, you're starting at zero, and your and your your engine doesn't run. You're not going anywhere. Aaron, let him talk, dude. Just let <laughs> him like talk for ten. Okay, solid so you seconds. have no possibility. You can't give a reason why it should be. We have seen the pattern that it starts from simple and moves to complex, and you cannot show me an example to change my mind where it would start from complex and go to simple. Okay, so you're asserting. And please do not interrupt me on this. You're asserting that there is no possibility and then saying that I cannot show you a possibility, therefore it cannot exist. I'm not asserting. I'm not asserting that you cannot show me a possibility. I'm asking you and you are failing to provide that possibility. Your beginning point, your presupposition, if you will. I don't have a that, presupposition oh, okay. and I won't. Here we go. I will, I will not. I do not accept presuppositions. I do not make presuppositions. My worldview, if you want to call it that, does not include any presuppositions. Quit projecting your own faults onto me. I will not share them. They're your faults. You enjoy them, not me. The reason that I hold this position is because I don't have the faults that you do. Quit trying to glom them onto other people. Okay, so again, your presupposition is that life cannot, things cannot be start infinitely complex and become less complex. That's your starting point. What did That's you say? your argument from the beginning with. Say your presupposition, again? your presupposition. I don't have a presupposition. Quit repeating the same error no matter how many times it's been corrected. I'm, I'm gonna not going to continue <laughs> this if you keep telling me that I hold or believe or think things that I don't hold or believe or think. Stop it. You think like that. I don't. Quit accusing me of your crimes. Knock that okay. off. Okay. I don't have faith. You don't have evidence. I don't have presuppositions. You don't have reason. Stop it. Apparently, you don't have the ability to have a rational conversation without yelling either. Can we chill? Yeah, out, I do. Please? Can you stop <laughs> accusing me of things I do not hold to? I don't have presuppositions. Accept that, correct your misperception, and move on. Adjust. Don't accuse me of things I, that I'm not guilty of. Okay, so I'm going to say it again, and if you lose your mind, you lose your mind. I don't know what to tell you. I, I haven't lost my mind. Your presupposition. I don't have a presupposition. There we go. Stop it. I, I, I don't. If all Just, you're going to do is lie to me, if all you're going to do is lie to me about me, there's no point in having a conversation. Just say Aaron. Why don't, why don't I just tell you how you believe in Krishna? Just say world view. Can I just accuse you of believing in Krishna? Sure, I just do, do that it. all day. Sure, and you can deny it. it, and I just keep accusing you. It won't okay. get us anywhere. And then right. I can pretend that, that you're losing your mind when I keep accusing you of believing something you don't believe. And you can get really adamant and angry about that. And you're welcome to. Stop accusing me of things I do not believe. Stop straw manning my position. Okay, Aaron, why do you get so angry when people say that you have faith that there are no gods, that you have because faith? Because as in the I already explained to you, faith is the most auto deceptive, dishonest position it is possible to have. So, what would you say you have then? I have confidence based on, and, and don't, I don't even have rigid confidence. It's certainly not absolute confidence. I have an understanding of the way things are, and that understanding is flawed 
and can be and has been corrected. Matter of fact, I've never made such progress as when people have shown me to be wrong and I've had to change my position and move on from that. Aaron, if I can interrupt you for just a quick second, your, your camera shifted down and you're recording your dog instead of you. <laughs> <laughs> Nice so, dog, by the way. So, Aaron, right, you. you, it's cutting out for a second. Can you hear me? Yes. We're Sorry. Good. So, Aaron, you don't have faith. You, you, you don't have faith. You have confidence. Is that that's what you're saying, right? Yeah. And, and I, in my book, I talk a little bit about the, the the projection that I always hear about how people who have faith want to project that on everybody else. They want to they want to imagine that everybody else has a faith based position. That everything anyone believes for any reason at all is a faith-based belief, but it is not. There's a different context for faith that is based on, for, for an understanding or a trust, if you will, that is based on evidence versus an assertion that you're going to believe what you want to believe regardless what the facts are. Okay. I have seen, so I have seen statements of faith from all the leading creationist organizations wherein they admit that they have already rejected all the evidence there could ever be against their position. And that is dishonest. Even admitting that you will never admit that you're wrong is still, you're, you're never going to admit that you're wrong. That's still dishonest. That can actually be found on the Kenham's uh, foundation. That is, uh, that, can, that can be fact checked actually. Yeah. Uh, that's fine and that's not, I'm just trying to identify that you are offended when people say you have faith because you have confidence. Because I am an epistemist, it's, a, it's the core of my personality that I must admit what I am wrong. I cannot hold a belief a priori to the facts. I have to be uh, malleable to that information. Even if I don't like it, even if I would rather believe something else, if you can show me that I'm wrong, I have to bend to say, I have to, I have to at least consider that what you've given me could prove me wrong and I have to give it serious consideration. And if it turns okay. out to be valid, then I have to change my perspective. I don't even have a choice in that. I don't get to believe what I want to believe like believers do. I have to accept the hard, cold, uncomfortable truths and move on from there. The right. way that I got to this position was by finding out I was wrong about a bunch of things that I used to believe that I held very dear. All right. You were so offended that I said you have faith and you're saying you have confidence. You have, you have confidence that there's no gods. You have confidence that the beginning of the universe is not from a God. You have confidence, degrees of confidence, yep. degrees of certainty. High right. degrees. High right, degrees right. Fact, so yeah. confidence, con fide, the Latin with faith. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you want to play a semantic game understanding <laughs> that the definition that we've already given, I, I, I can ask you both. Right. And, and a lot of people, a lot of Christians want to play this game with me. Like almost every Christian wants to play this game with me that they say, you know, the faith is not a belief that is not held without evidence, like I say, but not a single believer ever has been able to show me the scientific evidence to back up their position, which has always been my position was that faith is not based on scientific evidence. Nobody comes to a Christian belief based on scientific evidence. And the believers in their current position admit that no amount of evidence will ever change their mind. If so, I may, can I assert? Is, is it okay if I assert? Okay. So uh, let me go ahead and answer your question. If you couldn't assert, um, you wouldn't be religious, right? Well, let me go ahead and uh, <laughs> say what I want to say. So uh, you were saying, you know, you've asked every believer, they've never been able to give you the scientific evidence that convinced them to believe because there is no scientific evidence that yeah. would convince them to believe. Uh, yeah. I agree with you. I'm not a, a believer because yeah. of scientific evidence. Okay. okay. Theologically Thank speaking, you. I'm a believer because it is a gift of God. Uh, the problem, Aaron, from my perspective, is not that you have an evidence problem, it's that you have a heart problem and you love your sin. Uh, that's why that you don't believe in God. That is the most ridiculous thing that I get from Christians, apart from the projection that I always, always get. This ridiculous thing that I love my sin. If I loved my sin, why would I want to do the one thing that pisses off your God? If I believed that your God existed, like so many of you presuppositionalists pretend that I do, mm -hmm. if I believed that your God actually existed, the one thing that I know would piss him off is to say that he doesn't exist. That's the only way to guarantee that I'm going to get into hell. But if I mm -hmm. love my sin, I could just be a Christian and then be forgiven for all the sins that I do, and then I'm set. It's all good. But the trouble is, your God is not real, period. And so we have to have our own morality. We have to establish what our morality is. And fortunately, our morality does not come from your heinous God. 
we know mor what morality is. We have an objective standard for what morality mm. is. Whoa. Would you please would you please tell me what that objective standard is? As I said, if you know what morality is at all, then you have a way of determining whether your God is moral. We can measure morality against your God. It's not whatever your God says. Hold Yesterday, on, hold on, hold on. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you saying morality is a standard that you measure morality by? What's the, what's the standard of morality? I said that morality standard is a standard by which we can measure your God. You said if you know morality at all. Cool. If you what's know the what basis? morality is. Right. What's, morality right. what's morality the basis? Is, is a pretty simple thing when, when you come down to it. Yep. it. It doesn't have to be as complex. It, it's, it, it's, it's basic empathy. You know, treat people as you would wish to be treated yourself. When you have yeah, things which, like- Which is an idea that was spread by many different people before the, uh, the, the, the Jesus legend. Yeah, and, and, and societies in, in Greek philosophy and yada, 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 have come up with independently with their own system of morals, which typically are about the same. And, you know, when you have these things of, you know, what I would call absolute morality, you could justify uh, horrific atrocities in the yeah. name of what this absolute morality is. For example, <laughs> yesterday, yesterday I saw a Christian that I had previously debated with. I don't know why anybody is still talking to this guy because all he did with me was tell lies. That's it. That's it was his entire belief system was telling lies. But then he gets on this podcast and he starts telling that, 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 that anything that the secret little voices in his head tell him to do that's evil, he will do because he's thinking that it's, that it's God that's telling him to do that. So if God orders him to go kill children, that's fine. That's moral. It's moral because God said so. But the subjective and, you know, on every second Thursday kind of arbitrary decisions that, that the subjective opinion makes is not an objective morality. Now, we right. understand so, as a social species that a particular action or choice is moral or right if it somehow promotes happiness, well-being, or health, or if it somehow minimizes unnecessary harm or suffering or both. Conversely, a particular action or choice is immoral or wrong if it somehow diminishes happiness, well-being, or health, or if it somehow causes unnecessary harm or suffering. Now, if I may, if so I may. Have a stand you, you may in just a moment. So oh, we have a standard by which we can measure your God, and your God fails the test. Nobody obeys the law out of fear of God, okay? They obey the law because people have written laws and enforced laws, and not just for that reason, but also because we know that if you if you piss off your peers and, and, and make enemies of all of your, your, your tribe and so forth, you are going to be ostracized from that society one way or another. Okay. And it's not just that. It is, as a matter of, as I said before, of population mechanics, wherein eventually very few generations of this kind of a structure and you're going to develop people you're going to promote people who have a natural empathy for their family friends and fellows so we have an objective standard for morality okay now if i may uh those things that you mentioned first of all you mentioned empathy empathy is an emotion that's not an objective standard you mentioned laws written down by people that's coercion that's not an objective standard <laughs> what i'm asking me. you is okay empathy Empathy is feeling compassion for people. Yes, feeling, right? an emotion. That is an emotion. If I may finish, please. Okay. Empathy is an emotion. Laws written down by people in ostracization are coercion. That's not an objective standard. That changes from place to place. You said and happiness, well-being. And that's a good well thing, though. That the, is the, a good the rule thing. That I just, the rule that I just laid out does not change from place to place, except yeah. where religion rules the government. Yeah. Think does, of it this, does, hold think on, of wait a minute. Way. Hold on. Time out. Hold on. Okay, let me finish my thought first. Now, like you said, it, it does change from place to place, except where religion rules the government. Fine, yep. whatever. So if that makes the people happy in that place and they believe that promotes their well-being, why does that make a difference? What do you mean, why does it make a difference? Why does it matter? What's, what, is that wrong what, suddenly? What, what, what do you mean? Do you, do if you it makes them happy. Do you agree that genital mutilation is a good thing, though? But, I, mean, I don't understand. If, if, if having compassion and being mutually supportive and being generally you know, cohabitating in a, in a pleasant way makes people happy... What's wrong with that? What? Okay, I'm, I'm missing the, the, the point of your question. Yes, you are missing the point of my question. Got you it. said if it makes them happy, if it promotes wellness, what was the other one? Causes no harm? I'm sorry, what? Uh, you said promotes happiness, promotes well-being, and causes no harm, correct? Right. Promotes okay. happiness with health and well-being, yes. Does it have to be all three of those at the same time? Well, it should be, but it doesn't have to be all of them okay. at the same time. So if one culture decides that something makes them happy that other cultures find repugnant, is it still wrong or is it right in that culture? Wait, we're not talking about other cultures. We're not co comparing cultures. No, we are. Universally. Because you said, okay. 
We're talking about something that is universal. Right, but you are aware, in reality, all cultures do not have the same moral standards. Right, because in some, in some societies, we do have religion ruling. Right. And religion so, works against morality. If morality comes from promoting happiness, if something makes them happy, how can you say that it's morally wrong? Because religion is like, a, is like an addiction that causes people to do terrible things. It's like so Aaron, many I philosophers get, have already- I get that you don't like religion. What I'm asking you is how can you say that they're wrong if society decides what the standard is? If they because, write the law- Do you agree? Because when we're talking about society, I'm okay. talking about- I'm talking about a global society and you're talking about subsets of society. Yes, and in many because there of are those, subsets of society. About, and in many of those, you're talking about subsets that are ruled by religious beliefs, wherein you can kill the infidel on the word of one or two witnesses. Right, and by your standard, if that's the written law, that's what makes it moral. So why no, that's is that not wrong? By, that's not my standard. That's I said we they, have yeah, an objective no. standard for morality, which is contested by the religious position. Yes, but when so you in those objective, places okay. where religion rules, religion writes unjust writes and enforces unjust laws. Unjust by what standard? The standard I just gave you. Okay, the standard of empathy and emotion, the standard of punishment, the, coercion. Those are not universal. You said society writes down laws and you get ostracized. That's I not universal. I just said that, that a particular action or choice is moral or right if it somehow promotes happiness, well-being, or health. Right? Right. We but know not that. all three at the same we, time. We, not all three at the same time, right? It could be one. I said so or, not you, and. You, you want to have right. all three at the same time. Well, we, right. we but, don't. We don't okay. want to. We don't want to promote one and infringe the other at the same time. It can promote yes. one as long as it doesn't impugn the others. Okay. You get well, that so, because so conversely, quote, the other part of that was a particular action or choice is immoral or wrong if it diminishes happiness, well-being, or health, or if it somehow causes unnecessary harm or suffering, or both. Now those occasions do occur in societies that are ruled by religion because religion perverts and distorts and reverses everything into a perversion that is immoral. Okay, so once again, uh, you made the argument that empathy, empathy is an emotion that's not a universal standard. You said uh, laws that people have written, that's coercion, that's not a universal standard. You said health, happiness, and well-being. Happiness is an emotion. It's not a universal standard. You but said these are all universal Can standards. Can I finish, sir? Please. But this, but the, you're describing. You're, you're trying to dismiss them as if they're only emotions. But that's what morality is. You're trying to dismiss the definition of what morality is because it's just morality. So you morality can't is, get a better hold one. On. Time out. Did did you just did you say that morality is an emotion, or you're saying that the things that you described are morality? I didn't hear you quite clearly. If we're talking about moral issues, that we are talking about life, happiness, and well-being. Okay. That's what morality is based on. That's the entirety of the of the concept. Right, and all of so those things are subjective from have, place to place. Do you have a better definition of morality? Because I'm, right. I'm going to guess that you, that you're going to tell me that if, if if you heard a secret voice talking in your head saying, "Hey, go go beat children to death with their own puppies," that you would go do that. Yeah, right. no, I wouldn't God tell you that at all. Hold on, let, let me let me let me address them. No, I was, Aaron, I, I, would you correct correct me on that? If you heard the secret voice, hey, hey, this is God. I want you to beat children to death with their own puppies. Would you do that? Because that's no, what the, that's what the Christian no, I, listened no, to I yesterday wouldn't. said he I, would do. Okay, can I answer the question for myself, or are you going to put it on somebody else? No, I'm I'm asking you the question. Okay, expecting so an I answer may, from you. If I can answer you now, no, I wouldn't. Very good, thank you. All right, and, and I mean that sincerely. Because it was so disturbing to hear a, a, a representative of Christianity say that he would go out and kill children if the secret voice in his head told him it was God and told him to do it. Right. Now, if I may, back to my point. Uh, all of the things that you listed are all subjective that change from place to place. Wait, no, no, they're not subjective. They may be emotions, but they damn sure are not subjective. Happiness um, isn't a subjective that's right. scale? Because we're talking, about, we're talking about victimizing people. People. Unnecessary harm or suffering, right? People, okay, but, you mean pe by people you mean star stuff, right? Just random chance occurrences, uh, slightly intelligent people. African apes. Not just people, but other apes deserve rights too. And I, I have why? a bias that why? I'm going to admit why? right now. Why do they? Why do they deserve rights? I have a bias. As I said, pain? I was answering the question when you interrupted the answer to ask the question. Right. I have a bias. I was, I was taking a page out of your playbook, buddy. No, no, you, uh, you have no idea what my playbook is. <laughs> And you've made that painfully obvious, and I mean that sincerely. I have a bias that the more uh, 
cognizance, the more uh, intelligence, the more perception that a being has, the more the rights that it should have, because it, the more that it can understand pain and torture and so forth. And that's why I'm having a huge problem with like the, the meat industry, industry, for example. I don't have a huge problem with eating chicken, but I do have a huge problem with eating pork because pigs are so much more intelligent than chickens are. So all of us star stuff do deserve some rights. Now, it's a, it's an upsetting thing that we're, we're putting to this godless world that is red in tooth and claw, where everywhere that, that we haven't tried to, to correct this, and even in some places where we have tried to correct this, that it's just an abhorrent of justice of pain and terror. Now, it would be nice if, if we could correct that. If that's the way that the universe is, why does it need correcting? That implies that it's wrong and you have to make it right, that one is better than the other. But you said it's upsetting. That's just an emotion. That's arbitrary. That doesn't matter. No, it's not arbitrary. Arbitrary is when God tells you that, you know, to do not, you know, thou shalt not kill. And then on the next page says, kill every man and your brother, except on the next page, except for your brother, who is Aaron, who now becomes a priest and now gets special raiment with jewels on his robes. No, that's arbitrary, where the rules change every so often just on a whim. We're not talking about rules that change. Okay, so as opposed to as opposed to this upsets me, therefore it's wrong. That's not arbitrary no, at all. No, you're right. It, it has nothing to do with whether it upsets me or not. Well, that's the, you just said that we have to correct these things because it's upsetting that the nature is red in tooth and claw. So yeah, what? It's upsetting. What does that me, matter? But to every so organism that exists. So what? It's all just star stuff. What difference does that make? Because we are capable of feeling pain and. Beyond that, we are also capable of greater things. Yeah, and I had, this, I, I had this argument. Greater by what standard? Gra greater uh, arbitrary standards of this is great and this is not. But based yeah, on I, what? I'm not, I'm not listening to your arbitrary standards right now. I'm, I'm putting out an objective standard right now. I'm not listening. You get a chance to talk about your arbitrary standard about how God can change his rules every second Thursday that, come, that ends up in an odd day of the month. Regardless. Living organisms that have perceptions of pain should have certain rights not to be terrorized. And people who have the ability to exceed more should be able to achieve that potential. I just had this argument a couple of days ago with a couple of scholars who were absolute atheists, but they were scholars in archaeology who were arguing that we should have remained hunter-gatherer species because of all of the, um, the inequity that, or the inequality that resulted as a you know, you know going into agriculture and everything and that it that did happen and we still haven't mastered it and we're still doing it wrong we've always done it wrong and we're still doing it wrong now but we, in order to for anybody to achieve the the potential that we could have we have to take this step we just have to be able to do it correctly see and you so keep talking about rights and i don't understand where those come from if we're just star stuff in a random time and chance universe well rights obviously come from people and only ever always from people if rights came from god so they're made women up would have always been able to vote in the united states as so they're black, made up. Slaves. They made black slaves okay. would always be able to vote so in they're the united not real states. and so women would always and women would always be able to drive in saudi arabia that that, uh, that always would have been the case but uh, since your god is purely imaginary and all mm -hmm. rights actually only well, come from hold on buddy according to daniel so are rights rights are imaginary too we made them up they're not real we made that's them up. That, that's so they're correct imaginary also rights are rights are the respect that we show to other organisms so to right, other beings but, right but you're sh you're saying that we as a society give value and give rights correct like we, that's we correct. give value so when did you, when, when did, when did you day, get the right to vote less than 100 years ago right or right about 100 day, years ago Back in the day when we took away the value of black people and made them slaves, did that make it right? Because society, did that make them less valuable because we just Absolutely them? not. But as you said, absolutely not by what standard provided. you said that rights are made up. We give them to people. Why can't That's we take correct. them away? That is correct. Rights are the respect that we give to other people. That is correct. You so said we not, give value rights to people. Do not ob obviously do not come from your magic imaginary friend. Rights only come from governments respecting those people's uh, well rights. So they're arbitrary and made up. Rights are arbitrary and made up. Yes. So they're as imaginary as God, you would say. Well, no, God has no truth to it at all. We well, neither at least, do rights. We, They're just things we, that we made we up arbitrarily. We can at least justify that there's a reason why people should have rights. Why? They're arbitrary and made up. How do you justify arbitrary things? 
There's no reason if because we're just we randomly because in the for universe. For the reasons that I have already explained and which you will reject inevitably because it counters your worldview. I don't know. I would, I would like to find out why it is that either of you want to believe or make believe whatever it is that you want to make believe. What value does it have to you? I realize that it's going to be kind of like talking to somebody who likes disco and they're never going to accept the objective truth that metal is the best form of music. I yeah. realize that, that that's, that's just the case. First of all, but, but you was, are talking still... to somebody who likes disco and I, I will stand by it. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. I applaud you for that answer. But I, I find the only value that I can give to any information is however accurate we can show it to be. And if you can't show that it is accurate at all, then it has no value at all. Now think about that in, 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 and put it to every sermon you've ever heard. When you sat in a church and you listened to the preacher lie his ass off to you to try to get his money out of you so that he could seduce more boys if you're Catholic or girl, you know, underage girls if he's, if he's Protestant, whatever. Okay, I still feel like you did not directly answer what I said. Um, you were saying that society gives people value. So when I said that society took value away from black slaves, you said, and I said, is that right? Because so, or did that make them less valuable? Answer this one. Good. Before, before we had this, uh, can this I, idea. Can I answer? Sure, please. So Heather, mm -hmm. do you know historically what they use as their justification for slavery? Yes. What did they use? The Bible. I'll leave it at that. Uh, that doesn't answer the question. The question was, was it wrong to take their value away if value, if moral, if value, value to begin with? Right. Black so then why is it wrong? To, right. So no, why is it wrong? To, right. Rights are something that, as you said, are arbitrary. That are something that only higher thinking beings can conceive. And I feel like we can leave that right there. Yeah, that's that's true, because as we were just animals. We are all at risk of being. Uh, you know, we're subject to predation. We, we, there was no kind of a health care. Look at the look at the history of the world. Look at the history of our species. For all this time, that even when people pretending to speak for your God, you know, like Jesus or Krishna or other people like that, that they 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 come up with all these excuses for why you're supposed to give them praise, but they never give you any practical information about like like what microbes are or why you should wash your hands or any any kind of practical information at all. It has to come from reasonably thinking people to realize that, hey, this is unfair. The world is unfair. The universe is unfair. Clearly, the universe was not invented for people. The anthropic principle has absolutely failed because we can only survive on a tiny fraction of the, of the surface of this one fucking rock, and everything else is too far away from us to get By there. the way, I did the math on that. It's 2%. So we have to, we have, <laughs> we have to award, we have to respect other living beings. This is something that comes from higher cognizance. And your God directly violates higher cognizance. If, if I may, uh, you said the universe is unfair, but you also yeah. said people have no value. So how is it unfair? We, we give have to establish, value. just as you said, we have to arbitrarily decide. So it's arbitrary. Why, we have to arbitrarily decide that people okay. have value. And, for, and I, I admitted in that description that I have a bias, that my bias right. is the one bias that I'm aware of that I have. Uh, there could be more, but I'm only aware of this one, is that the more intelligence and the more comprehension that a being has, the more rights that it should have because the more that it is aware that it is suffering. So does awareness increase value at all or is it still not real? It's still not real. Okay, so it really doesn't matter then. Everything you just said doesn't matter because we don't have value and rights are arbitrary. If we have no compassion, if we were as your God is, we have Wait, no compassion. Wait, compassion or... doesn't matter. Why should I be compassionate to somebody with no value? What difference does that make? They don't mean anything. All right, and because tomorrow, that... if we as a society decide that an entire race of people are valueless, does that make them valueless? Or is there some objective value that they have just because their people made there an is image no, of God? Does that completely no... take away their value? We all of us will be extinct at some point in the future. True. And the universe will continue to exist without us. So none not of this matters. Of us, not a one of us will be remembered. 
like I want I want to say that yeah, the, the the oldest the the most memorable person in the entirety of human history. Do you guys know who the most memorable person in the entirety of human history is? Uh, throw it out there. <laughs> okay, Gilgamesh. Yep. That's <laughs> yep. yep. Five thousand years later, we still know who Gilgamesh's boyfriend was. That's pretty impressive. We know we we have details of Gilgamesh's life. We even discovered his tomb. But most of us will not have that case. And, and 5,000 years from now, no one will know who Gilgamesh is. So just to, cl just to clarify, um, it's not that society would take away their value. It's that they had no value to begin with. So society is really not taking anything away because people inherently have no value. I have a question Humanity, here. In, in all of our compassion, in all of our higher yeah, reasoning. Can Andreas ask a question? I, I, I want to give him that chance in just a moment. Yeah. In all of our higher reasoning, we have awarded that. We, you know, I, what I want to put it diff a little differently, not just that we have awarded, we have recognized that they should have value. And the more, the higher we think about this, the more, the broader our range of the things that should have this value and should have this respect. And now go ahead, take away it all. Shut up. There is. Okay. Hi. I have a question here. Why would you need your God to tell you the value of a person? especially when you can read the Pentateuch in which you can read clearly how he gives more value to person of a certain tribe instead of giving it equally to every single person. Why do you need the fear of a punishment for you to behave properly when you're in a society? So if I may, um, it's not the fear of a punishment. It's not coercion. It's not God telling you that people have value. People have value because they exist in the image of God. That's what makes them valuable. Uh, what if exactly I may, is the image of God? Can I finish my thought, please, sir? Please, yes. I'm Thank sorry. you. If I may, um, Mr. I'm sorry. Your name was Andres. Yes. Okay. Uh, you just said all those things as if it was bad, but we've already established that people don't have value and and all and rights are arbitrary. So, what difference does it make to favor one tribe of people above another? Why is that wrong all of a sudden if they have no value and rights are arbitrary? Do you want a full on explanation of how we determined that that is wrong? It took some time to determine that that was wrong. And it, was, it wasn't something that we always understood, obviously, from the onset. But we eventually did figure that out. How did Without you figure it out if value? God, because God doesn't help us do anything. What did, what did you figure out if people don't have value and rights are arbitrary? What did you figure out? As I said, as I've already explained, I feel like I'm just going to repeat explanations that are just going to go over your head. But I've already explained that billions of years from now, none of us will exist. And anything that we do today won't matter then. But that does right. not mean that it doesn't matter now. And it required a higher mind to realize that even though it doesn't matter then, it may still matter now. And Why we should have compassion beyond what our religions taught us. Okay, so if in your worldview, if I may call it that, uh, based I, I will, on the argument, I will allow that. All right, based on the argument you just made, um, we didn't come from any creator. We don't have intrinsic value. Rights are arbitrary. We make them up and give them as we please. So when you talk about mattering now, mattering in what sense? Because we're all going to be extinct. The end is inevitable. So nothing matters at the end. But for some reason, but it, it matters, matters here now. Too. It matters now to people who have no value and whose rights are arbitrary and have no inherent value at let all. Me, let me give you a hypothetical. There's one I just came up with a couple of days ago. How old are you? I'm um, 31. You're 31. All right. Let's imagine that uh, you wake up tomorrow or on your birthday, on your 32nd birthday, you wake up and you're not where you should be. You, you, you suddenly awoken wherever you were when you were 18. You're on, it's on your 18th birthday now instead of your 32nd. And you've awakened with a, a check for $1.5 million. Okay. The stipulation is you get to live from 18 on, knowing everything that you know now. And with all of this money that you get, and no, nobody has to know about it because you're 18. So you, it's completely your, your responsibility. And this will not have any effect on any of your interpersonal relationships. It won't have any effect on anything. The life that you get to leave now is absolutely meaningless. It's just you as a young person with a bunch of money and it doesn't matter what decisions you make. You're still going to enjoy your life, aren't you? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Your life is absolutely meaningless. Right. When you die, 
the whole reality in which you exist from your 18th birthday on will just simply evaporate. It means nothing at all. But that doesn't change the fact that you still have compassion for people and you still have the enjoyment of life and you're still going to respect that other people have that right as well. What right? You said rights are arbitrary. They don't exist. What right That's do they correct. have if they don't exist? So how That's do they have correct. that right? So how do they have that right? It doesn't exist. Because it's we pretend. have awarded, because we have recognized, as I said, that beings that have the ability to experience pain and suffering should be spared from that. Why? This is a that human goes back to empathy. This is the empathy that we have that only comes from higher thinking beings. Look how long our planet lasted without any of this, without any kind of health care, where an animal that, that, that finds itself in a, being escaped from a crocodile, escaped from a crocodile, managed to save its life, but now it has a broken leg, it's going to die of the infection. Pointless, right? How pointless is that existence? That is 99.99% of the history of the earth, uh, the history of life on earth. Okay, so just to Absolutely clarify. Absolutely no justice at all. It had to come to us to decide that, you know what, this is wrong. The way the universe is constructed is wrong, and we're going to do our best to try to fix this gross injustice that we are born into. All right, so just to clarify, uh, once again, your worldview, you're saying that based on empathy, which is a subjective emotion, We've decided to give people imaginary pretend rights that we should all hold to because the universe is unfair, even though we have no value or inherent rights. Still, somehow, the universe is unfair when fairness means nothing in a world where nothing has intrinsic value. Except when we create it. Well, if, we, well, if, we create it if we create it, it's not intrinsic, so it doesn't matter. It's pretend. It's Spider-Man. We created Spider-Man. Spider-Man's as real as human rights. You, you're, you're currently enjoying this conversation with me through the altruistic... Uh, efforts of a number of other people that have allowed you this kind of quality of life that you would not have had 10,000 years ago. Quality of life doesn't matter. I don't have any value and rights are, are imaginary. We made them up. Altru altruism and that was always is made the up. Case. And that was always the case. And if you'd lived 10,000 years ago before anybody had figured this out, you'd have been dead already. Right. So and and your life would have been hard and short and painful. So Just what? like the entirety of Earth's history. So what? So what? I have no value or dignity. I don't so matter. now through humanity, and by, I don't know if you figured out by, by now, I'm a humanist. Yeah, no, I got that. Yeah, I, I got that. <laughs> so, so we understand that humanists understand that it requires humanists or, or people to have humanist values where we, and we, we come up with real world situations or real world solutions to real world problems. Wait, but why is, why is it a problem? Are absolutely meaningless. Why is and it a problem? Know, why is it a problem if these people have no value or real rights? It's all imaginary and made up. You're saying problems as if they have some kind of rights and value inherent to them that we should take care of them and protect them. But right? you said they're arbitrary. Right. A right is a is is a, a, a amount of respect that we have arbitrarily decided to grant some being for whatever so, reason. So it's Empathy. arbitrary and it's not real. Right. And ten thousand years so, ago, before anybody had figured this out, you didn't have any rights. So why is that unfair? Because your God doesn't exist. Why is that unfair? All of it's this arbitrary. came from people. This came from higher thinking people. Iran, the reason that you have a higher quality exist. of life. You just spent time establishing that rights don't exist. And now you're arguing for rights. I did not rights. spend time establishing that rights don't exist. Are they I arbitrary? I explained how they exist. They are, are arbitrary. They are, arbitrary? They are the construct. they're not real. They are the construct of people. A right is the degree of respect that the rest of humanity awards to you. That's right. what a right always was. Right. Spider-Man is also a construct of people. He's also not real. Rights are arbitrary. They don't matter. But How do is you know unfair? who Spider-Man is? He is Peter Parker, sir. Okay. <laughs> I, I realize that you're wrestling. You're real. You're wrestling with the fact that your your imaginary your magic imaginary friend has absolutely no validity in the reality that we actually live in. That doesn't I matter because we have, that doesn't matter have, because we have magic I imaginary cannot, rights that don't exist in the real world. So what difference is it? But make? they do exist in the real world because they we have don't because they're them. arbitrary. They exist as much as they are as arbitrary as our political systems and in many, on any number of other uh, abstract right. constructs that we have created that still have ramifications in the real world and still have real world effects. Effects don't real. matter. Effects just, don't matter. 
it's it just does scary matter. that your it, worldview is based on society giving no, humans hold on. rights. It's not scary. It's not scary. It's absurd that you would argue for fairness in a world where we have no rights, dignity, or value. It's absurd. But I what, just said we did have rights. No, we don't because we they're high, arbitrary. They're arbitrary, so they don't exist. They're, yeah, they're arbitrary. We had to decide that you would have rights. They're pretend. Just like your we, God. Yes. Right. Yes. So they, they are take pretend, them away except that they have more to. validity and more yeah, reality can, and absolutely more impact on your life in the real world than your God does. But none because of that matters God because I have no only values. In your, while your God exists only in your mind and in the wallets of a whole lot of gullible people, the rights that you enjoy are actual implementations. These things are real. These real things have real world value to you. Right, but the um, rights that I enjoy, I also enjoy fictional stories. Those are so also aren't real. And you're 10, saying that because years of ago, rights, you wouldn't have either one. But that doesn't matter because I have no are, value or dignity. Ten thousand years, years ago, product of abstract thinking. Ten thousand years ago, nobody had made up your god yet. Um, you didn't have your rights yet. You wouldn't have had any of these pleasures that you enjoy now. Wait, according you to your died, argument, I, according you to your died, argument. You would have according died of argument, an impacted wisdom tooth. According to your argument, I still don't have rights because they're made up and arbitrary. But because they are made up and arbitrary, that's why okay, you have them Okay, so then I don't, I don't actually have rights. They're but made up and arbitrary. They're not real. you actually have them because we made them up. They so, may be arbitrary, <laughs> but they have, I actually have, they them have they're made now, up. <laughs> they have now been applied where 10,000 years ago they would not have been. Yeah, but they were still as fake okay. then as they are now. I, I can um, feel I can feel a great deal of pain coming from this person who realizes how utterly irrelevant his his whole no 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 is. the the pain that I have right now is at the absurdity of your argument that we have that we should respect each other even though we have no value or rights it's all made up and fake and that we make our own right. value. Yeah, yeah, yeah so you've so you've made sure to deliberately make sure you don't understand anything I ex I just explained okay no, right. I, I understand I understand everything you explain Clearly, I'm just telling you you have I'm just telling you that you do it not understand does not make a all right. shred Can I say of sense. Real quick? you've just illustrated no. how you uh, give me a moment <laughs> You have just illustrated how you do not and will not understand anything I've just said because it violates your worldview and it, because it challenges it. And I understand you have a perspective that is utterly vacuous, has no value at all. And I'm talking about something that has real world value and is just as arbitrary. Nothing has real world real. value. Nothing has real world value because none of this matters. Everything is just a value that we give it. Right. Nothing has inherent right. value. All right, so can the lady who is I'm just not awarded- be, yeah, I, I'll give you just a moment. I'm just, I'm really, I'm really sorry to hear his psychology. I've talked to people who believe as he does before and it's, it's abysmal. I don't know how to reach people like that. Go ahead. Okay, um, so I do actually have a question. I think what I understood, Aaron, is that what you base, you know, morality on is if it's, um, it makes you, you know, happy, feel good, uh, not hurt, not pain. Not just That's in the individual like, level. We're, we're talking about population mechanics. Okay, that, that, but that's, what, that's an important aspect. A lot of people, a, a lot of believers specifically, especially miss. We're talking about population mechanics, not on the individual level. So is that, would you say pain is also how we reward value? The ability to feel pain? As I said, I have a bias myself personally toward uh -huh. that. Uh, and that is a lot of the... Um, the, the the issues against the the meat market the 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 industrial meat market which is absolutely insidious <laughs> uh, really it is I, I don't have such a problem with with turkey or chicken because they don't really understand very much what they're doing but I but I understand from personal experience with pigs that they are very intelligent animals and that this and that I just can't eat pork anymore and I'm having a huge problem with beef as well. Okay, and I have to I have to rationalize this against the the natural world before we got involved, before rights existed, before we arbitrarily decided that, that things that could understand suffering should be deprived of the suffering, because for the entirety of the history of our planet, things have just always been suffering and in terror. That's just the natural state of this planet, until we come in and fix it, and the one impediment to that in recent times has been religion. How so do we you're fix it if it's just the way the universe works? That's the mechanic of the universe. Right. We're not fixing it, we're interfering. Jillian, can Heather? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. are interfering in order to fix it because the only way to fix it is to interfere with it, yes. 
All right. So you are saying that you are rewarding more value to say a pig than a chicken. Yeah. And this is my okay. own personal bias. I don't speak for anybody else on this. I mean, you, you could kind of break it down to what is a chicken capable of, you know, in task wise, think of training a dog, right? If you could train, a, look how much you could train a pig versus look how much you could train a, a, a chicken. Where is this mental capacity? I'm not even talking about I, training. I can, We're just talking about like innate intelligence. And yeah, no, I'm following you. Cognizance of its environment. It style. A pig okay. has so much, a, a pig is one of the most intelligent animals that we have in the world. I mean, there's, there's dolphins, elephants, parrots, pigs, and people. And they're, they're really, that's like the top five. Okay. It's, so it's, a, it's almost criminal when you realize how intelligent they are, the kind of torture that we put them through for, for fucking bacon. I okay. realize that bacon is great, but what you have to, <laughs> the, the cost, the, the cost outweighs that. Okay, so cognitive, um, like just the awareness of your environment grants you, or the level of awareness of your environment grants you more value than most, like depending on what type of animal you are. And my the personal bias. The, okay, it, it but may if you not, have a human. My that, personal bias may not be justified. Okay, if you have a human that was born developmentally challenged, yeah, and they're not aware of the environment, are they less valuable than um, a chicken? But you trust well, them with the car. We have a different scale. And this is where we get into transhumanism. <laughs> because while evolution is, as I said, an inescapable fact of population genetics, we do have to realize that evolution is ab absolutely as cold and heartless as the rest of the universe is. And we have to be able to seize control of our own evolution. So there was a, there was a movie called Gattaca, where it showed how people like, they should be like uh, genetically engineered. Be, and I, I actually... I. I, I like that idea because we don't, if we know that if we allow for everybody to survive, we know that the, that deviance in the genome will proliferate and that people will become weaker and weaker. This is what natural selection normally weeds out. But natural okay. selection is a cruel and inhuman, literally inhumane process. So there has to be a way that we can take care of people without letting our genetics degrade at the same time. And that is transhumanism. That's the only thing that we can do in that respect. And I so do what's feel the... like, um, I don't know, Hitler kind of felt the same way. No, Hitler felt Ooh, nothing like whoa. that. Hitler was a Christian I, creationist, and I can give you the specific quotes. Out and of I'm not mind calling pump. you that. I'm just saying that it's such a dangerous, slippery slope to go down. Yeah, it, that, that, that I am nothing like Hitler? I got you. Because I read Mein Kampf, <laughs> and I'm absolutely nothing like that stupid ass. Can I, can I interject? No like, he, was, he was a creationist. He argued all of the creationist talking points. He said that the evolution was only possible within kinds. He actually said that. And that, it, the, that the variation beyond kinds would be a violation against the eternal creator. All of that bullshit. Hitler was a creationist. So, okay. Dar and by the way, Darwin was not a eugenist either. So that's, right, just, no. just, that's just two things that always irritated the fuck out of me. Is right. that, you know, Hitler would be accused of being a Darwinist and Darwin would be accused of being a eugenist. And both of those are absolute lies. Can, can Darwin, we agree that Margaret, can we agree that Margaret Sanger was a eugenicist? You know, off the top of my, I, I know the name is, but, but I, I uh, she was the founder is. of Planned Parenthood. Margaret Sanger was a eugenicist? <laughs> yeah. Why would you assume that she was a eugenist? That makes no fucking based, sense. Ba based on her quotes, when she talks about human weeds, Okay, well, I have no idea about her, her, her earlier quotes. All, all I want to talk about is, is it, is it uh, like Ken Ham, uh, CEO right. of Answers in Genesis, yeah. famously accused Darwin of being responsible for the, the genocide of the Australian people, the, the, the natural Aboriginal people of Australia. He blamed that on Darwinism. Mm -hmm. However, when oh, Darwin right visited Australia himself, Sorry. he complained about what a horrible atrocity that was. And by the way, this was decades before he came up with his theory. So he was complaining that it was already going on before he got there. And he complained about what a terrible crime it was. So imagine what a crime it is for Ken Ham to tell such a lie as to blame Darwin for something that happened before he was even famous and before he even knew what was going on. If I may, um, if, sorry, if I may real quick, uh, Darwin had no inherent value and no inherent rights. So what's wrong with saying a lie about him? And neither do you or neither do I, unless we work together to establish that. 
Right. Yeah. But so what? <laughs> what does that matter? So, so so what? So what do we have? We have ourselves and we have the rights that we grant to each other. We have the respect that I'm willing to give to you and that I hope that you're willing to give to me and that mutually we can establish so that we can all, we can all achieve our better, you know, our, our better potential. I've I, already talked about how things that we need to do as a species in order to be less cruel than our nature demands that we be. And I'm sorry I, that your God is such a complete fuck up that he created the planet to be this bass awkward from the way things ought to be. But we've established a ought morality to, ought beyond to, ought that. Ought to be ought to be to who? We don't matter. We don't have value or rights. We ought to be to who? What do you right, mean ought to be to who? Do you I have a potential? Do you have a potential to achieve some good for the betterment of humanity as well as yourself? Well, better than what standard. Guys, can the woman who just received value a few generations ago speak real quick? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, so you, uh, first of all, I want to go on the record because I feel like a meme is about to be made. I did not just call Aaron Roth Hitler. <laughs> I was just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah, the I, internet. I don't, is not I don't know if anybody problems. else. I don't know if anybody else got that idea. I did not get that. that okay, idea, good. So. I mean, you're a beautiful, <laughs> wonderful, charming individual. You are, okay, we're okay. good. So, but I feel like you did not answer what I said. If a baby was born handicapped and not aware of their environment for their whole life, what gives them more value than a chicken who is also unaware of their environment? If envi environmental awareness is what we base rights and value on, well, surely can, a human has more value. Yeah, sure. So th think of it this way, though. We, we do have limitations in our society. Uh, would you agree with that? Yes. Okay. So if someone had, for instance, a mental disability of some sorts, would we as a society give that person the right to drive a vehicle? No, but that doesn't, that's not talking about their value. No, she's okay. talking about something deeper than that. Right. If I, if I understand what she's saying. She's talking about, let's imagine that a person is born that has no capability of cognizance whatsoever. They're, they're a meat packet. They're human genome, but they have no comprehension whatsoever. If there is no potential that they could ever develop comprehension either, I don't see a moral issue with pulling the plug on that. Now, I may, I may seem completely evil on that, but if there's no, if there's no possibility that that person, it left, we, we've, seen, we've seen children born with such horrible defects that you just want to put them out of their misery as quickly as they can. They can't survive more than a few minutes, period. And, and in some cases, this is a terrible thing. They, 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 there were some cases that were identified like, like that before the child had even developed to the point of birth, when they could have been aborted at like six months old. And they knew, they knew that the mother was going to have to endure all of the pain of childbirth and they were going to have to go through all of the pain of labor and all of that. And they were going to have to go through all of the inconvenience and pain of everything else for a baby that they knew could not, could not survive or understand anything ever. Like a child so, born with harlequin ichthyosis, right? Yeah. So there, there's a difficulty there. Are you preventing the okay. suffering by allowing that child a merciful death? Okay. Can I interject? Yes, please. Okay. So um, once again, you're making these appeals to like the value of somebody when inherently you've said they have no value, that we should no, I, prevent I never, suffering. I never, you have repeatedly lied about what I said. Okay. I never said that they had no value. I said that we grant the value. So now you have it where you never so had that, it before, but now you have it. You have it now. Okay. Stop saying you don't have it. But I don't have it inherently, right? It's not natural to me. It's just because yeah, you it decided it. Yeah, it is inherent to you now. Yes, it wouldn't have been 10,000 years ago, but how, it is now. How is it inherent to me now? It's either inherent because or all the time or it's not. Because we have granted it to you So then in it's not inherent. Decades. It's not it, inherent. It is inherent. No, it's because not. It was, because it's because given. On the precedent, because these precedents were established before you were born, it definitely yes. is inherited. Where 10,000 years ago, it wasn't inherent. It's absolutely not inherent. It's given. You've mentioned it's given. That's what it means. 
It was given before you were born. These rights were established before you were born. Therefore, they are inherent. So you have them. Stop lying about whether you have them. You have them. Shut the fuck up about not having them. I'm not lying about anything. I'm just saying your argument back to you. It doesn't come from birth. It doesn't yeah, come from existence. My argument does back me. Thank you. It is inherent. It was given. It is arbitrary. You didn't have it 10,000 years ago, but you had it before you were born. And so it is in inherent you have it it's real we give it to you shut up you give it to me and it didn't exist before we make it up but it's real that's right much like democracy didn't exist until we made it up and now it's real yes mm. some things happen like that spider-man didn't so, exist now the comic books are real and you know yeah, what your god they're real, still they're real bad real. right now buddy <laughs> <laughs> Your God still isn't real. And I remember that this, this was what we were supposed to be talking about. And we haven't spoken a word about it. We've talked about how people have had to establish their own morality in the absence of any magical magic or friend who doesn't do anything. He right. Instead, instead do they've just instead they've just established magic imaginary rights that we should all hold to, even though they don't actually. But they're exist. not magic, and they're not imaginary. We they're not imaginary, even rights, though we made them up. Real right? Yeah, they were made up, just like democracy. Okay. And democracy is real now. Okay, I'm just checking. Right? They're made up. We made up rights. And, and republics right. are real now. We made them up, but they're real now, right? Spider-Man comics are real. No, oh and we made them up, and now they're we real. We made them up. <laughs> so we made up your rights, and now they are real. And they were arbitrary, and you still have them, and they are real, and your God still isn't. They and we were, could take they, away rights tomorrow, based well, on it is, we would have society. It is games. possible that we could all have some kind of a, a you know, like a worldwide case of rabies, and we could do this terrible thing. Or your religion could take over the whole world in the same result. They, they were arbitrary, or they are arbitrary? We had to decide on our own what that whether we something should be awarded rights and for what reasons and so for that reason they, they, they are entirely arbitrary yes okay so they you are arbitrary okay. your rights they are and so they are now real and okay. you really have them you really have these arbitrary rights that we have designed to you these very important arbitrary rights that didn't exist until we made them up that's that's right and now okay. they do exist mm -hmm. just like Democracy didn't exist, and then we made it up, and now it does. But if we real. tomorrow, if we tomorrow as a society decided to take away those rights, and then in the future, would that mean they don't exist anymore? If we tomorrow decide that we're all going to go to sleep for the rest of our lives, period. Yeah. Well, then, well, I guess we'll go. I'll go to sleep for the rest of our lives. If you want, if you really need to run away from reality that hard. If, if, the real, if, if the comfortable reality of what I'm teaching you is so painful to you that you have to come up with whatever parody you can to escape it, then escape it. If your mind can't help this, if it, if it hurts you that much, then find whatever safe place you can crawl into in a fetal position. But I don't have that problem. Okay, I, so I just to clarify. the way things really are. Just to clarify, um, I'm going to walk around the ad hominem and just get to the point. We there's, made them up. There's no ad hominem here, and I would challenge anybody in the chat room to find an ad hominem there. We made up there the rights. One. We made up the rights, so now they're real. But if we decide to take them away tomorrow, are they no longer real? If we decide to take them away tomorrow, then they no longer exist. Yeah. So then they're it not is, real. It, it is. It is possible that we could just all lose like our minds. But <laughs> what is the possibility that absolutely everybody in the world is going to lose their minds tomorrow? Well, that's not the question. The question I'm asking you is, are no, they- No, that is are the they... question. You're, you're no, saying no, no. if everybody lost their sanity and their humanity all at the same time in synchronicity, what would happen? Oh, yeah, you're right. If everybody died tomorrow, everybody would be dead tomorrow. You're right. Everybody would be dead tomorrow. And you'd still be wrong today. Okay, but that doesn't matter because rights are arbitrary. That's the point I'm getting at. And They're the reason real. they exist is because we arbitrarily decided they should exist and they would not have existed if we did not arbitrarily call them into existence. So you would not have these rights. Otherwise, they were always only ever arbitrary, period. So when you argue about unfairness and correcting mistakes, that's all arbitrary too. Yes, we okay. have to decide as humanity. Why do we want to reward respect to other beings? Now you are literally, I don't, re I, I, re I know that you don't realize you're arguing for this, mm -hmm. but you are arguing for disrespect 
to be awarded to everyone. You are actually arguing against higher morality right now. Okay, so now that we've established that rights are arbitrary, uh, your, your decision that unfairness is arbitrary, how then do you have morals that aren't arbitrary? I just gave you that a few minutes ago. No, but and you just- always you, understood. You, Even dogs understand this. Even dogs understand that you don't just arbitrarily attack somebody and cause pain and rending damage because there are going to be re repercussions from that. Not even, even if you could escape punishment yourself, the, the person or being that you've attacked that chat room is, is, going, is, is <laughs> the person or being that you've attacked is still going to suffer those damages. Even if you could get away from it, even if you, if you feared no repercussions at all, if, right, if you but suffering, if you have special rights, let's say I grant you special rights. We have the, the I'm, I'm now the dictator of this country. I give you right to do whatever the fuck you want to, and you are completely impugned. No law can touch you. You can do whatever the hell you want, and no, nobody can do anything about it. How many people are you going to murder or rape tomorrow? I'm betting that as a human being, even with you having the ability and immunity to all prosecution, you still wouldn't do it because you're human and you realize that arbitrarily people <laughs> deserve rights arbitrarily people deserve rights. So when you talk about suffering again, it really doesn't matter. That's just an arbitrary value judgment. You've yeah, made and you're not going to, even though, even though you pretend, and yes, we are talking about make believe right now, because that's your entire perspective. Like make believe rights. right now. You want to pretend <laughs> that it doesn't matter. But even if, even in the situation where you are suddenly born and you, you suddenly wake up on your 18th birthday with a $1.5 million check next to your pillow. And you have, and you have, a, a, a promise from the then president or whatever, you know, it, Illuminati government you want to imagine that you will have absolute immunity to any laws, it still doesn't matter. All right, I would like to ask Julian a question in a moment. Not, you're not going to visit great harm onto other people because you know that even if you accept, even if you, if you can escape all punishment, you know that you're still causing harm to another person and you know that that's wrong. So your morality yes. is not, not, not dictated from on high. It comes from within and it becomes from you being evolved as a social species and having a natural compassion for your family, friends, and fellows. That's how you are. Okay, so we're Daniel- following um, from Daniel, my if worldview. Daniel, if I may, after, after you ask your question, I think we might have to call it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Are we uh, so if, if you cut your hand, right. right, it would hurt, of course. Right. Do you think I couldn't empathize with you on that one? No, I believe you could. So we've already established just that general bond, even though it doesn't, you can't see that as like an ethereal thing of whatnot, but I can at least understand like, damn, that would really hurt. Mm -hmm. So we could continue on with that is if I see you suffering mm -hmm. and I see, Hey, there is another, there is a way to fix that suffering by, if we agree as a society that, Hey, we're not going to do this because it makes people suffering. That idea itself is a man-made idea that fixed and remedied your problem. And we did not need any external outside force to solve that problem. So if I may, uh, the, the problem with that whole scenario is that suffering is arbitrary because I have no value. So what difference does it make? Who says you Except have no Suffering value? is not arbitrary. Suffering is legit. That actually happens. That's not arbitrary. That is, yeah. that is objective. What well, you've and, made an it, it, it is arbitrary whether we want to do something about that. And fortunately, we, we've decided that we want to do something about that. We want to the reason suffering. the reason that you decide that my suffering is bad is because I have value, but the value is pretend and made up. It's not that's inherited. right. Just like your God, it is. It's just like democracy. It is pretend and made up, and it's something that we've decided as a community, as a society, as a global society. We've decided that people should have value. That that beings that have a certain so, amount of intelligence and comprehension, they should have value. They should depri be deprived of terrorism and and senseless suffering. Yes, 
And because we have arbitrarily decided to make up something that didn't exist before, it exists now and it is real now and you enjoy it now where you didn't have it at all 10,000 years ago. So Daniel, uh, the problem with my argument is that you've made a plea to emotion with empathy. That's an emotion, that's a feeling uh, based on- Which is what morality is. is. Yes, if, if, morality if I is an emotion. If I may finish, please, sir. Morality if I may is, finish, please, morality, sir. Morality is an emotion. So everything you wanted to say to negate morality is only going, is, is going to work against you. If I may finish, please, sir. Yeah. You've made a plea to emotion of empathy based on suffering, but that has to do with value that I don't have inherently. So that's really irrelevant. There's no foundational reason that any of that matters. Okay. No, so no, no. They gave you argument, value today. They could take value that's away right. tomorrow. That's right. I'm valuable today. Right now, your it emotional matters. argument, your entirely arbitrary emotional argument is that you want to pretend that you have an eternal value that is somehow ob 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 objectively granted regardless what any human decides. If you were the only person on the planet, you would somehow still have rights, even though there would be nobody to grant you rights. You would still somehow have them. Mm -hmm. That is completely arbitrary and false, and it is unrealistic. And it denies the reality that we're trying to impart to you. And the only other thing that I can say that I, that I agree with you on, honestly, is that we should probably close it up. <laughs> All right. Uh, to close it up, I do want to ask just a personal question, not really a debate yes, please. question for Arin. And so in a world, you know, that everything is ultimately meaningless. You said we were going to- I never to, said that. No, you said we're going to go extinct. So it does, yes. nothing really matters But that right does now. not, no, I did not say we that. Matter as a matter of fact, I said the exact opposite of that. I said, even if it doesn't matter 5 billion years from now, that does not mean that it doesn't matter now. Okay, we don't have inherent value. So nothing really truly matters unless you tell me it matters and you tell me I have value, which I'm really lucky that y'all granted me value a few generations ago, but y'all really can take it away tomorrow. I'm really lucky that I happen to live in a society that allows me value. There are a number of countries I could have been born into that where, where I would be killed already. I've even been to those countries and just you've been lucky enough not to get out of the airport and be recognized because I would be dead already now. And I would argue that those people in those countries have inherent value because they're made in the image of God, not because their society what has the taken hell away. Is the image of God, the that, image of an evolved ape. I don't understand that. that. Okay. What does that mean? Well, we don't agree on the evolved ape thing, but my whole, yeah, I realize my whole point I is I can this, prove the evolved ape and you can't prove the magic imaginary friend. That's the problem. My whole point in this is you are so angry at God. I don't understand. I don't, I'm not <laughs> angry at all about your magic imaginary friend. I'm not angry at a person who doesn't exist. You don't think but, that you sound angry. Uh, no, I think I sound angry at the lies promoting an imaginary being that is a justification for all kinds of human atrocities. What, what, what he's it angry is about not, is that people use not, the idea. I am not angry at the magic imaginary friend that you pretend to exist. There is not a person there. So I can't, I honestly, I honestly think that I hated the wicked stepmother in Disney Cinderella more than I hated your God, because at least I could, re I could relate to her as a real person. I what he's angry about that. What he's angry about is the fact that people use religion to violate people's imaginary arbitrary rights, uh, the people that have no inherent value and don't matter at all. People who do have, do have, and, and, and notice how your friend cannot correct his mistake here. No matter how many times I've pointed out that now that we have granted that he has inherent right. rights, he has inherent rights. He can't today, accept that today because it means that he started this argument being wrong and he's still wrong <laughs> now, all right. he just can't accept it. He has inherent value today. We yes, hope he that's has it right. tomorrow. He does. He didn't have it 10,000 years ago. It had to come as a result of humanitarian humanist values establishing, hey, people deserve rights. Any people, doesn't matter what color they are. It doesn't matter what ethnicity they are. People, by the fact that they are people, you know what? Not just people, people beings, beings that have a certain <laughs> amount of intelligence should be beings that have a comprehension of their environment should be deprived of torture. Yes, this is what we humans have established. We made it up 
It's arbitrary. And now that we have made it up, you actually have it. It is now real, just like democracy. And I realize your friend will never get this because he can't. But that is the fact of it. Uh, yes, I refuse to uh, grant that rights are arbitrary and we could take them away or give them as we please. I'm sorry that you don't accept reality, but I was I was cautioned about that before this conversation began. At the beginning, oh. though, you said that science is not absolute knowledge. Science is not absolute reality. That's right. Okay. That's why is everything, everything, everything that science knows to be a fact is still called theory. Is anything absolute knowledge? Can we know anything with certainty? I want to sp sp express some caveats, understanding that if we <laughs> accept that the reality is real, then we know that Noah's Ark didn't exist, period. It, 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 well, we know that the global flood never happened. That's, that's absolute. That's about as absolute as I can get. Um, we know that even if God exists, as I said before, we know that evolution is still a thing and that uh, the Bible is still absolutely wrong about absolutely everything it says that's important. You said science is not absolute knowledge. Like we can't absolutely that's right. be that's sure that I those things. That's what I just repeated to you. Yes. It's okay. Just, so it's just like that's this. That's why everything that science understands is no, no matter how factual it is, we still call it theory. That's why the germ theory of disease. We know that it's an absolute fact that germs cause disease, but we still call it a theory. We know that atomic right. theory. We know that atoms are a thing. We we can we can prove everything we need to prove about atoms. We've even taken pictures of them, but it's still atomic theory. And we know and can demonstrate and have demonstrated for thousands of years the processes of evolution throughout agriculture. We can prove evolution is absolutely a fact of population genetics, but we still call it a theory. It's still Everything a theory. No, to be true, we call a theory. Why? Because if we ever claim to be, if we ever claim absolute truth, then we will be just as wrong as religion always was. So you can't be certain about anything. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Definitely. So no, I can only be 99% where you can't be 38%. Heather, can, can you be 100% sure? That... No, she can. All she's she's going to be programmed to say that she's absolutely certain, but it's a lie because that's what thing. religion is, is just lying. It's people saying, I know for an absolute fact that there's a God. No, it's not absolute. All right. It's not a fact and you don't you're, know it. Every part saying, of that statement is wrong. You're saying you could be wrong about everything that you know, right? You could No, be. I'm not. No, I did not say that. You said 99% sure. You could be one, there's a 1% yeah. chance you could, could be wrong be, about I everything. I could be wrong about something. Can I be, wrong, be about wrong, wrong about everything? Absolutely you just no. Said no. No, I could not be wrong about everything. Are you sure of that? Absolutely, yes. Okay. I can't so we got some absolutes. Everything. <laughs> I can't right. be absolutely sure because I can be wrong about some things, but I can't be wrong about everything. You, however, absolutely can be and certainly are wrong about the very thing that you hold most dear. And that's the saddest thing. I mean, sad is relative, right? It doesn't matter because we don't have value. So what does Except it matter? You for do have value. I keep <laughs> correcting you. You do have value because we have given it to you because we are right, but it's not, it's not worldwide. It's not inherent. Society it's not inherent. So I don't really value. have value. And I have now imaginary you actually value. do have that value that you keep pretending and lying that you don't have. I and have I really imaginary hope value. Can, I really hope we continue to be rewarded value as the days go on. That, <laughs> yeah. Because we don't have inherent value. We, we have to... You Hope do have inherent value now. You do yeah, have but society can value. take it away, so it's not you're, inherent. You're right. So let's just say you do have inherent value now. And maybe tomorrow, absolutely everybody on the planet gets rabies. That is, okay. Maybe that, or absolutely everybody <laughs> on the planet, everybody on the planet oh. becomes a fundamentalist. <laughs> I broke it. Are you all right? Yeah, either way. Everybody I hit, loses I hit my headphone mind, wire and, it and you crazy. all lose your rights. Okay, we all lose value tomorrow. On that note, it, uh, it is I, possible if everybody adopts your belief system tomorrow, we could all lose our rights. Yes, that's correct. I think we understand what you're saying. I think we should wrap it up. Oh, I'm back. Yeah. Yeah. On that, on that note, I think we're ready to wrap it up. This was a bucket of chuckles, by the way. I want to. It's been a you. real treat. <laughs> and I, I do want to say that uh, Mr. Ra objectively has beautiful hair. What, why, why, thank you. For, for, <laughs> for a man who is facing his 57th birthday, the fact that I still have hair is. A blessing. <laughs> that's that's impressive because I'm already thinning and I just hit 31. So. Oh, by the yeah. way, that dog. What's Arn? What's the story with this new dog of yours? This dog, this huge fucking dog, 
walked into my house. My mother was coming by. As she as she's walking up to the door, this dog, this giant dog follows her. She opens the door. She goes, "Is this dog oh, yours?" Right this huge dog walked into my house. This giant dog just walked into my house like he lives here. And he, I don't know if you if you're aware that dogs smile. Post show now. This dog walked in. With a, <laughs> this dog walked in with a huge smile. And I have other dogs in here, and the dogs decided my, my dogs, who are much smaller than this thing, decided that they were not going to try to attack the polar bear that just walked into the house. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a huge dog, and we eventually we found the neighbor. We found we found the owners, and this was a disturbing thing. We gave the dog back to the owners. We didn't know this, but the owners had act, the owner, this girl had actually posted a, a poster saying that she, want, she wanted her dog back and it was offering a hundred dollar reward, but she didn't tell us that, you know, we, we, we managed to go through the vets and a number of other agencies to contact the owner and the owner came to collect the dog. And then we, because we listed the dog on um, nextdoor.com, nextdoor.com notified us that the dog that we had returned to the owner took it to the, to, took it to the pound and dropped it off at the pound within two hours. Whoa. Why the hell would you take the dog from us if you're going to put it in the goddamn pound? So we went to the pound. And when we explained that the dog had just spent the last night with us, that the pound said, you know, normally we have a 48-hour quarantine period, but since the dog has already spent the night with you, fuck it. Take the dog. And so we, we took the dog. And now we have a 90-pound Great Pyrenees. <laughs> And uh, it, it's a funny thing. I, I, I really do. The, 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 dog, the dog is a problem because the, the biggest problem, and this is going to be kind of an admission, the biggest problem with Great Pyrenees is that they're free thinkers. Oh, it reminds me of my border collie. <laughs> they, I was warned so many times, do not ever trust a Great Pyrenees off the leash, ever. <laughs> just just don't. And, and when, you, when you call the Great Pyrenees, they won't come. They'll just look at you like, really? <laughs> Great. I found the Pyrenees on my bed tonight. I found it on my bed. I'm like, you are not, you're not going to get up on my bed. And I couldn't Julian, get the dog to get off my bed. I had to you lift might mute, a mat mute your mic. <laughs> Sorry, there's a, there's a baby yelling in the background. I had to lift the mattress to dump the dog off the bed. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, but I, um, I, I do, I, I am quite fond of the dog, actually. It, it is a it is an enormous problem because it is enormous. But um, <laughs> our end's a big I'm, softy deep down. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> if anybody has ever actually had the pleasure of meeting Aaron in person, he is probably the nicest person you'd ever meet, even though he is absolutely foreboding to look at, um, just size wise. He's a big man. And he reminds me of every TV villain, even though he's the nicest guy in the world. Okay, Iran, Iran looks like uh, he has Klingon in his DNA somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you see this dog? <laughs> Aaron, do you have any uh, uh, any things you want to push? You know, since you're you're the big dog here, and I know you have book deals and other stuff. So, what's going yeah, on with um, you? Uh, your plug. In about a month. Is she okay? In about in about a month, I will be. Now the dogs are playing. Shut, shut. So in about a month, I will be in uh, in Orlando, Florida, giving a presentation on what I think might made America might have made America great. And then uh, this is a slow year for me. I don't. I'm not doing anything again until South Africa in February. Oh wow! Yeah. I'm going on a paleontological dig at the invitation of the University of the Witwatersrand. Uh, we are searching for Permian therapsids. And in the course of that, I will be giving presentations in Johannesburg and, uh, and, and, and at least one other city after that. All righty. Did you want to uh, plug your book or not? Yeah, that book was three years old. Sold very well, by the way, Foundational Falsehoods of Creationism. I am working on two more. Uh, one of them I will I will I will divulge right now is the um, an infidel reads the Quran, <laughs> <laughs> which, which has been so much fun. <laughs> what what I've done with this is every time I read I read a couple of surahs and then I write a blog post about it and then I have a video interview with people who are raised in Islam and who speak Arabic, and 
on occasion, I've had believers with me. I had one apologist, a professional apologist, who bowed out after two episodes because he said he felt humiliated. <laughs> no fucking surprise, right? And then I had another one that, who was a believer for like all of three episodes until he deconverted. Wow. So yeah, three episodes. So I'm, I, I invited the uh, Islamic Education and Research Academy in Europe. Uh, specifically, I asked for Sabur Ahmad, who I debated once in Houston. Uh, I asked him to come up with an apologist who could be on my show. And he said he would find somebody, but he still hasn't coughed up anybody yet. So, <laughs> yeah, and, and every couple of weeks or so, we do this, we do this meeting, like about an hour or so, where we talk about the Quran with people who were raised in it and, and discover just how ridiculous this belief system is. And as a result of that, I can never go back to um, a Sharia country. But at least I've already been at the observation deck of the Burj Khalifa, so I've got that off my bucket list. <laughs> All right. So I don't know where our uh, our hosts are. I, I, I see Andreas is still there. Julian um, is still muted. Oh, I didn't mean to mute Julian, or I didn't. I don't think I muted. No, him. no, no. I, I muted myself because there's a lot of noise in my background. <laughs> okay. So anyhow, uh, I guess at this point we can wrap things up. Um, By the way, Julian, your your mustache is epic. <laughs> it sh only should be longer. You know the problem. <laughs> the problem. <laughs> the problem is that uh, I'm ethnic, so when it gets longer, it gets curly, and it goes into my mouth, and that's the worst. That's why okay. you need the wax. <laughs> I can recommend a good uh, a good uh, mustache wax. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> All righty, folks. So I guess we are going to call it a wrap. Uh, this was the first time we've ever done this. And I want to thank our special guests that we've had today, Aaron, Heather, and uh, Julian. And we will see uh, what we could come up with in the future since now we have this platform. Uh, we do apologize for being late. Uh, it was about 30 minutes later, so due to some serious technical issues. <laughs> but we did resolve those issues, and we are now uh, more hot to do stuff like this again. So if you like this video and you would like to see more, please, in the comment section, or you can even message the main page, let us know what you think. Um, and what you would maybe like to see in the future. So with that, I would like to thank everybody that was involved today. And we are signing out. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks for having us.